Hey y'all and welcome to my channel. So I am starting off this video completely barefaced because we are finally going to be reviewing Rare Beauty, which is Selena Gomez's new makeup line. So I am sure your subscription feed has been just overly saturated with this brand. And I wasn't even sure if y'all would want to know my thoughts about this brand, but I figured since I was gonna purchase them for myself anyway, just because I'm so curious about her products and just the whole vibe and aesthetic really speaks to me. It's definitely my style. I figured I would go, just go ahead and do a review. And then for those of you who actually wanna know what I think, hopefully this will be helpful. So I picked up three products. I picked up her foundation, her concealer, and then one of her blushes. I didn't pick up everything from the line because honestly not everything spoke to me. These are the three products that I really, really wanted to try. And then just depending how this review goes, I may go and pick up some more products, but this is just the little sampling that I wanted to start with. And um, yeah, so we're gonna be trying all of this on today. I actually just got this in the mail about an hour ago. So today is actually Thursday, September 10th. You are seeing this on Monday. And what I was thinking of doing is because it is later in the day, uh, it is currently 2.45, I'm going to show you my first impressions, apply everything, give you my thoughts along the way. I'm gonna wear this for the remainder of the day and then I'll do a check-in later on this evening. And then what I'm gonna do is Sunday when I go to church and I hang out with family, I'm gonna wear it all day on Sunday and then I will do possibly a check-in on Sunday and then Sunday at the end of the day I will give you my final thoughts of the two days combined on what I think about these products and I think that will give me a good idea of these products and I should be able to formulate my opinion off of uh, you know a, about a day and a half almost two days of wearing these products uh, make sure you grab something to drink this may be a little bit of a lengthy video I tend to be very thorough in my reviews I'm just sipping on a ton of water and let's go and get into it so uh, I am just going to read a little bit about Rare Beauty. Like I said, the majority of y'all have probably already watched a review or two. Um, I'm a little bit late to the game. I was just kind of waiting on shipping. Um, but I'm just going to read it to you anyway in case you haven't seen any. And uh, just give a little bit of information and then we'll get into the actual products. So uh, it says, this is a makeup, this is makeup made to feel good in without hiding what makes you unique because rare beauty is not about being someone else but being who you are. Uh, on their mission statement, it says, we are on a mission to help everyone celebrate their individuality by redefining what beautiful means. We want to promote self-acceptance and give people the tools they need to feel less alone in the world. Our vision is to create a safe, welcoming space in beauty and beyond that supports mental well-being across age, gender identity, sexual orientation, race, cultural background, physical or mental ability, and perspective. So that's just a really quick snippet about the company. Um, also, I'm sure you've already heard about the Rare Impact Fund, which was created by Selena Gomez. And 1% of all sales, including whatever profit or whatever uh, donations that they get from their partners, goes to the Rare Impact Fund, which helps to fund mental health services. So um, I love that. I love when brands give back. And it's nice to know that while you may be buying something frivolous like a foundation or a blush, you know, a, a portion of your sales is going to something that is actually, uh, you know, very impactful. So, all right, so we're just going to dive right in. Um, I did not pick up the primer or anything, so I just moisturized my skin really well. And I used the Good Molecules Silicone Free Priming Moisturizer. I will list all of the products down below that I use in this video. In case you're wondering, I chose this primer because it's like a good baseline for me. I know that it performs very well. It doesn't have any weird reactions with any other products that I have. So I feel like it'll be a good base for me to uh, test the foundation on top of. So uh, hold on, I can't see my computer without my glasses, sorry. So this is called the Liquid Touch Weightless Foundation. It comes in 48 shades, which I feel 
like is why this brand has gotten so much buzz is because 48 shades is pretty incredible when it comes to um, just a, a shade range. Like most brands, conventional or clean, they don't have that kind of shade range, like not even anywhere close. So having 48 shades is very appealing. Um, I They do have a shade finder quiz online and that's how I picked my shade. Um, I was given the shade 220C, which is described as light medium with cool undertones. It says it's suitable for sensitive skin, it's cruelty free, vegan, paraben free, dermatologist tested, non-comedogenic, which a lot of those claims they're not really regulated, but um, I just want to let you know that that's on there. So it says it's a weightless, smooth glide formula that drives to, that dries to a natural skin-like finish. It has pure pigments that are packed in a serum-like base. It's made with botanical blend of lotus, gardenia, white, water lily, um, and then just kind of looking at the ingredients, some things I did want to call out. It does contain dimethicone, so if you don't prefer to use silicones, it does have dimethicone. It also has PEG-10. Uh, there's no mica in here, so, um, but in, in its place it has synthetic well, floor, whatever that, that word is, that a lot of companies use in place of mica. Um, and I know some people don't prefer to use mica in their products, um, just for ethical reasons. So let's go ahead and get into application. I've shaken it up really well. I'm gonna start with a light coverage uh, based upon what they said on their website and then I will build it up if I feel like I need to so big doe fit applicator and I'm gonna start with like one two three four and then build it up if I need to if you do not prefer using an applicator directly on your face you can always take the applicator apply it to the back of your hand and then work from your hand or work from a palette you do not have to apply this directly onto the face everything has a little knob at the top except for the primer which is a pump um, and that is uh, I couldn't find it on the website which I'm kind of surprised that they didn't include it on the website but it's supposed to be easily, more easily uh, accessible for people with arthritis or um, any kind of disabilities with the hands. So I thought that was really cool. Um, I don't really know like any more information than that. Like I said, it was really difficult to find, um, but I've heard from several people that that's why they created the packaging to be like this. But it is very, very gorgeous plastic packaging and um, yeah so anyway back to the application this is a little bit dark for me but hopefully when we blend it out it should be good so I'm gonna take my Alima pure foundation brush and I'm gonna start working this over the skin and see what kind of coverage that we get All right, so the four dots across the face definitely gave me very, very sheer coverage. So I'm gonna add a little bit more and see how much coverage I can get. I do wanna try and build it up, um, not because I prefer that amount of coverage, but for those of you who do, I kinda wanna see if you can actually build this up and get decent coverage, so take that a little bit more liberally. I'm gonna do my brush on this side and then I'm gonna take a sponge and see how the sponge blends it out on the other side. All right, so I like both methods. I like the brush and I like the sponge. Um, so I think either way, you know, whatever whatever you prefer. And I would say at this point, I'm about light coverage, so definitely not medium yet. Um, this is about like a good solid light coverage. So I'm gonna try and build it up just a little bit more. I'm totally happy with this level of coverage, but um, I do wanna see if it builds up. And the way I kind of gauge if something is light coverage, medium coverage, full coverage, I do have some scarring on my cheeks and different things like that, so that's kind of how I gauge the coverage level. Obviously, it's all perspective and just, you know, my opinion, but for me, I feel like this is about light coverage. You can definitely still see everything on my skin. Um, it's just a little bit more evened out, so I'm going to take the doe foot again. Really, really lightweight. Um, I would definitely agree with that kind of like C 
serum-y texture that it is described as. It's very, very lightweight, so I do like that as I do like that a lot. So now I would say I'm about a medium coverage, so it's definitely buildable. I feel like with that last layer that I did, I really started to see the coverage come out. So um, definitely more of a dewy finish. The primer that I used is not dewy by any means, so all of this glow that you're seeing is from the foundation. So it's got a really, really pretty glow to it. Alright, so I've let the foundation sit on my skin for a little bit, and just upon first impressions, I can tell that it doesn't really sit on top of texture very well. That could be because it is so thin and so serum-y. It's just accentuating a little bit of texture on my chin, but nothing that's like a red flag or anything, nothing that I just think is terrible. We're going to go ahead and move on to the concealer. I do have to put my glasses on for this, so I'm going to get foundation all over my glasses. But this is called the Liquid Touch Brightening Concealer. It again comes in 48 shades. I got the shade 220C which is the same shade as the foundation name-wise. They're not the same shade though, and I'll show you all that in a little bit. But it says this instantly hides what you want to hide, blemishes, dark circles, redness, fine lines, with medium buildable coverage and a radiant skin-like finish. Creamy and hydrating, long-lasting, sweat-resistant, uh, won't cake or settle into fine lines. It's made with the same botanical blend of lotus, gardenia, and white water lily. Um, again, it has dimethicone, it has PEG, PPG10, um, a lot of different extracts, so I would highly recommend for you to go and check out the ingredients for yourself. This does have glycerin in it. I don't think the foundation had glycerin in it. So we're going to go ahead and get into application. I'm going to show you the, the shades of these because I thought the concealer was going to be about the same shade as the foundation but it's actually a little lighter. So um, I know typically people like to go a little lighter with their concealer. I actually like to use the same shade of concealer as foundation. So the sun is kind of going in and out, so I'm trying to compensate with my camera setting. So I'm sorry if it sometimes looks a little overexposed, but um, I will make sure to keep checking it. So I just applied that concealer to the inner and outer corner. Um, both of these are described as a cool or uh, a pink undertone, which I feel like they're a little bit more on the peachy side, maybe even like yellowy side. So they're not as pink as I would have thought, but they work very well. So I'm going to blend the concealer out with my sponge and see how this goes, see how much coverage we can get. Alright, so that's the concealer blended out on this side. Really nice, definitely dewy, but not thick. And I think I would have liked to have had a shade a little closer to the foundation, because I feel like it's a little light, but that's just personal preference. That's nothing on the concealer. Alright, so that's both under eyes done looks really really nice very natural not a ton of coverage with the amount that i applied but it looks really really nice so i'm gonna go ahead and take this on any spots that i have and i'm gonna do what they recommended and i'm gonna let it sit for you know 30 seconds or so the foundation did actually did a really good job of covering most of my spots up but yeah you can kind of see this Concealer is lighter than the foundations so. and I actually like the shape of the applicator It's kind of like a triangle But it really fits in all the little nooks and crannies. It's, it's kind of nice. All right So I've let this concealer sit for about 30 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend it out All 
All right, so if you let the concealer sit on your skin for a little bit, um, it does thicken up a little bit and get a little bit more tacky. So I was able, I really could see that coverage coming through. So if you do want a little bit more coverage with this concealer, the tip that they mentioned about letting it sit on your skin actually is very, very helpful. But yeah, it feels really nice on the skin. The foundation, the concealer look really nice. Um, I love how it just not, it's not like overly dewy, but I just love the finish that the concealer has. It is, it's like they said, like it's a very radiant, luminous finish and it just looks so pretty on the skin. So I'm liking everything so far. It looks really, really nice. Okay, so this is what the skin is looking like right now. Really pretty, definitely has some glow to it but nothing like too, too much, nothing overly glowy. But everything looks really nice. I have some texture on my forehead and it's not accentuating that. It's just right here on my chin. But my chin is my problem area. That's where things tend to not look the greatest. So, but everything else just looks so, so beautiful. I love the glow that it gives, but when I touch my face, it doesn't feel sticky or tacky or greasy or oily it really has set down all right so uh i am gonna go ahead and set half of my face down and then i'm gonna leave the other half the way it is and i'm gonna see which one i like better at the end of the day all right so i applied the powder to this side no powder on this side i will say i don't love powder on top of it i feel like when i applied the powder and these are my favorite face powders i feel like it made my skin look a little dry and it accentuated the texture so something with the powders that I'm using and the foundation are not meshing the greatest so I'm glad I only did one side and then we'll just kind of see how this side looks but you can see this side has a uh, more glow to it but anyway just want to mention that we'll kind of see how it wears for the rest of the day but let's go ahead and move on to the blush so I picked up one of their blushes this is their soft pinch liquid blush there are eight shades. It's described as a weightless, long-lasting liquid blush that blends and builds beautifully for a soft, healthy flush. Available in both matte and dewy finishes. So it says, airy, lightweight liquid formula blends and builds effortlessly for a soft flush of color. It's infused with long-lasting color pigments. Mistake-proof layers beautifully over liquid and powder formulas. And available in matte and dewy. So it's got their same botanical blend that they have in the foundation and the concealer. Um, the different shades have different ingredients. Interesting, the shades Joy, Happy, Lucky, and Grateful, which I believe are their dewy finishes, the, those do not have any silicones in them. But the shades Grace, Bliss, Love, and Faith do have dimethicone. So interesting, so I was looking on the Rare Beauty website and they didn't have them divided by finish. So I went to the Sephora website, which is where I purchased my products, and they have them divided by the finish. So uh, Joy is a dewy finish along with the shades Happy, Lucky, and Grateful. So the shades Bliss, Love, Grace, and Faith are all matte finishes. So I got one of their dewy ones because I like a little bit more of a dewy, glowy look. So I'm going to do what they said, and I'm just gonna do two dots. And I'm kind of glad that I only powdered one side because then I can see how it works on top of powder as well as on top of creams. All right, and then I'm gonna start with my finger. Ooh and see how the finger works, because they said to use your finger. Oh wow, this color is gorgeous. All right, so I'm gonna pull in my sponge, because this is a little intense, just to blend that out. Oh, that's gorgeous. That is beautiful. It's not super, super dewy. I was expecting it to be a little bit more shiny, but it's really not. One, two. Whoa. All right, I feel like for some reason, I did two dots, but I feel like these two dots packed a little more punch, so 
I'm gonna use my sponge to blend this out. All right, so clearly the dots that I did on this side were holding a little bit more product because that, that was a lot. So I'm gonna take some onto my nose. All right, really, really pretty. A little goes a long way, which I was kind of expecting, but with that being said, it still blended out really nicely. So this is the side without powder. This is the side with powder. The side without powder definitely looks more dewy, which makes sense. But even the side with powder, it still has a nice sheen to it. But both sides blend it out really nicely. So you definitely can apply this on top of powders. Now we'll see how it wears, but so far, it looks really pretty. I love this color. It looks like your cheeks are burned. Love it, love it. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of brow gel. All right, and then I'm gonna apply a little bit of my Honest Mascara. And then I was thinking, since I didn't get a lip product, I'm gonna use a little bit of this blush on my lips. Woo, pigmented. All right guys, so this is the completed look. Uh, it is currently 3.30, so I started at around 2.45, so it's been about 45 minutes. And like I said, I will wear this for the remainder of the day, um, and then I will do a check-in at the end of the day, let you know what I think, show you how everything is looking, and then I will wear this again on Sunday so I can give it a true, like, full day test. But my cheeks look pretty, like, everything just looks so nice, like, I do not have a highlighter on and everything just looks so pretty and fresh and glowy. But so far, so good. So I will see y'all in a little bit. All right, hey guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my check-in for today, which is Thursday. And then like I said, I'll wear it again, but it is currently seven o'clock, 7 p.m. Um, and I last spoke with y'all at 3.30. So it's been three and a half hours. I'm getting ready to go to bed and also um, it's super, it's getting dark outside and I wanted to make sure that I did my check-in while I still had some natural light. So this is what everything is looking like. I will say my blush is not looking that great, um, especially on the side that I powdered right in here. It's looking really patchy. I was just taking my finger and trying to blend it out a little bit, but it's looking really patchy right there. So I feel like as a whole, either the powder I used today was not a good powder to use, or um, I shouldn't powder these products at all, or maybe even try using the blush underneath the powder next time, because I did the blush on top of the powder. I was wearing my glasses, so I have like little small little indents, but yeah looks really really nice like this whole side of my face looks so good so so good forehead looks good it started to settle a little bit into my forehead lines like i have some forehead lines right there i've been editing on my computer so i've been like super focused so i feel like it's been settling up there this is the side without powder but everything else looks really good like it's not even settling into my smile lines because it is so hot here like i have to wear a powder so i am most likely going to set this again but i'm going to try a different powder i'm going to try um, my bare minerals powder that's my favorite and um i'm going to try that it's a little bit lighter and i think it won't look quite as textured but so far so good so i'm going to leave y'all with this so i will see y'all in a couple days Hey guys, all right, so it is now Sunday, September 13th. So when I saw y'all last, it was Thursday. So it's been a few days and I'm going to be wearing all of my Rare Beauty products all day today. It's currently 7.55 in the morning. I've had this on since about 6.30 this morning. So we're about to head out and go to church. I'm gonna wear this all day. I'm just hanging out with the family. So um, I just wanted to show you what it looks like today. I did do my makeup differently than the last video. 
and I'll have all the products that I used for both days in the description box. But I definitely powdered my face down. I powdered my face down just a little bit more today because it's so hot outside and I was gonna, I'm gonna be out and about. So I did powder a little bit more um, and I did use bronzer, which I did not use on Thursday. But I did use the blush today and of course the foundation and the concealer. Um, so I feel like today I'm looking a little bit more full coverage and a little bit more matte just because of the way I did my makeup, but I used the same products and I figured it'd be good to kind of switch it up so I can really see how these products wear with uh, just kind of a different style of makeup. So anyway, everything looks really good. I will say um, this morning when I applied the foundation, I actually used my hands. So I just took the applicator, applied some to my fingertips and then uh, rubbed them together and rubbed them all over my face. I didn't love that application. Um, I don't like it with the hands. I feel like because it is so thin, it just looked really streaky. And also the texture of it, it, and this is like the first time that I've actually really felt the texture of it because before I used a brush and a sponge, the texture is almost like a powdery finish. Like it almost feels like there's a bit of texture to it. So it's a little bit more matte and I found that it was clinging a little bit to dryness. I did use a setting spray. I used the Cover Effect setting spray. So I feel like my skin looks a little bit better right now, but I felt like when I was blending it into the skin, it was really, really accentuating any kind of dry patches and texture. So it looks good now. I powdered it, set it down with a setting spray. So it looks a lot better, but I didn't have the best application with this this morning. So I just wanted to let y'all know that um, I wouldn't recommend using your fingertips or I just had a, not that great of an experience. I think a brush or a sponge uh, is the best way to apply this. The concealer applied beautifully. I actually really enjoyed the concealer this morning. It's got great coverage and I didn't have any issues blending it out or anything. So this was really great. And then for the blush, I actually applied my blush underneath my powder instead of on top of my powder. My kids are screaming. Um, I applied this underneath my powder and I liked it a lot better. Uh, on Thursday when I applied it on top of the powder, I felt like it started to look patchy and started to break apart. Today, I feel like I like it a little bit more. Um, so anyway, this is the makeup for today. Um, I'll check in at the end of the day. I'm gonna be kind of busy today, so I won't be able to do a check-in during the day. But at the end of the day, I'll sit down with y'all, show you what my makeup looks like, give you my final thoughts, and let you know what I think about Rare Beauty. So I will see y'all later. All right, guys, so this is my final check-in. I'm going to let you know how things are going and i'm also going to just going to give you my final kind of rounded thoughts on the rare beauty line so let's go ahead and hop into it um so it is now 6 40 so i've had this foundation concealer and blush on for 12 hours as you can see i am oh hello i am looking quite dewy um, now I did switch up my products this time than I did on Thursday, um, but I actually used more mattifying products today and I'm still looking quite dewy. So if I were to pick one product from the line that I, I think was like the standout for me, it would definitely be the uh, concealer. I think, I can't remember what this is called, but uh, the concealer. I actually thoroughly enjoy this. Um, every time I apply the foundation, like I mentioned this morning, it has a very interesting texture. It kind of feels slightly powdery, almost has like a texture to it. It's very thin, but I wouldn't say it's serum-like in the sense of like a very liquidy type of product. It definitely has like a grippiness to it. So whenever I apply this, I don't know, I don't uh, immediately love it. I feel like it clings to dryness. It really accentuates texture. So I think if you have that perfect model skin, you know, this is gonna look fantastic on you, but just when I was applying it on top of texture and just like I have this really big dry area right here, which you probably can't see, um, but I just felt like it accentuated that. However, when I applied the concealer on top, that's really when I felt like, okay, my base is looking beautiful. I think if I were to recommend a complexion product, like a base product, I would definitely go for the concealer. You can use this as an all-over base product. You can use it on its own. You can mix it in with moisturizer. 
Um, the foundation just didn't wow me. It's not something that I would just say, hey, you need to have this. There are so many foundations on the market that I absolutely love. And while I do love the shade range, I just feel like there are other options out there that I prefer more than this one. Now, the blush is gorgeous. Uh, on Thursday and today when I applied it, I feel like it applies a little bit more matte than dewy. This is one of their dewy formulas, and I feel like I wasn't really seeing the dew when I applied it. However, it's gorgeous. A little goes a long way. You need the tiniest little pin drop on your cheek and that's it, so it's gonna last a really long time. It blends out nicely, you can use your fingers. I found the best method of application was with a sponge. I just felt like it kind of picked up the excess product because a little does go a long way. Whenever I used a brush with this, it was just a little too heavy handed, it was a little too much, but a sponge applied this beautifully. It's not a blush that I would recommend using on top of powder, which for me, I like to wear cream and liquid blush on top of powders, and all of the ones in my collection wear well on top of powder. So the only thing that I don't like about this is it's a little bit more finicky and you need to wear underneath powders. Um, but other than that, I really like it. It does take time to blend in, and like I said, you just need the tiniest amount. All right, guys, so that is it. That completes my wear test and review. I hope you enjoyed everything. I hope that this was uh, a relatively helpful video. I know this is probably not your first one that you've seen, um, but I just wanted to give you my two cents on the products. And like I said, in future videos, I will continue to update y'all and let you know um, maybe new, any new things that I learn um, with these products, um, I will definitely update y'all on. But overall, I've enjoyed it. I love the price point. I love that everything's under $30. And I just, I love the aesthetic. I love that they're giving back. Um, so I think there are a lot of really great things going for this brand. And I think the products are great. I love the style of products and I'm really excited to see what else they come out with. And I hope that this video just provided some kind of additional information, maybe helped you make a better decision on whether or not these products would be good for you or not. Um, everyone's skin is different. Everyone is different. So, um, you know, just kind of have to take my review with a grain of salt. And um, I would encourage you to watch other reviews with people with other skin types, skin tones, um, makeup styles. You know, I think it's good to get a well-rounded opinion on these products and that will probably help you make the best decision for yourself. Because um, I know just kind of collectively these products can get quite pricey. So anyway, thank you so much for watching as always. Remember, I love you, God loves you, and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye guys. Thank you.